Hi everyone, welcome to Practice Blitz. Today we're talking about shifting. Since we spend so much of our time shifting as string players, particularly in the advanced repertoire, I'd like to show you different ways of practicing your shifts. We'll be working on drills that increase shifting skill and also your shifting confidence, which can be just as important. To make your shifting accurate in practice and more importantly on stage, you need to work on developing three of your most powerful tools that you have as a string player. Your first tool is your ear. You have to use your ear to audiate or pre-hear the pitches before you shift, and you use your ear to diagnose any errors or tendencies that you may have in your shifting practice. Your second tool is your mind or your intellect. You need it for understanding the roadmap of the fingerboard, to know what positions you're playing in and the involved, what the involved intervals are, the distances between the notes. The third important tool is your proprioception. That's the fancy word for the mind-body connection that allows you to understand exactly where your body is positioned in space, but without any visual feedback. So when you touch your nose or your ear, for example, with your hand, you don't need to measure the distance to get there, right? You don't need to look in the mirror. You can just do it. It's proprioception that allows you to do that. For shifting, you need to develop a good physical sense of your instrument. That's the feeling of the positions. And you need to develop good proprioception. That's the internal sense of where you are on the instrument so you can hit different targets on the fingerboard. Proprioception is key not just for hitting the right pitch, but also for getting there exactly on time within the context of the passage. The goal of practicing a shift in different ways, like I'm showing you today, is to up your batting average, to make you more consistent. Today, we'll just concentrate on upward shifts. I think we'll save the downward shifts and jumping into position from an open string for another session. In order to work on your shifting, you have to know what you're doing. That's step one. And what I mean by that is that you have to know what you're aiming for. For any given shift you're working on, you have to be able to name the positions, such as I'm shifting from second to fifth, for example, and you have to have the right sounds in your ear. You have to be able to sing the notes you're aiming for without hesitation. To get the pitches in your ear, you can play them across the strings instead of shifting. You can play them in a different octave, an octave down, for example, or basically do whatever you need to in order to get that job done that you're pre-hearing. Once you can name the positions and sing the pitches, then you're ready to proceed to the first exercise. Once you can name the positions and intervals and sing the pitches, then you're ready to proceed to the first exercise. Before we dive in, let me tell you a couple of rules I have for my students when it comes to shifting practice. The first is what I call the Goldilocks rule. The rule basically says that in practice, you may always correct pitches by starting over a shift, but you may not adjust from a wrong pitch into a right one. So no fudging, no sliding, no auto-correcting, no fish fishing for the pitch once you've gotten there. Unless, of course, you're on stage, in which case that's a different story. But let me show you what I mean. So let's say I want to shift, let's just take something simple, into third position, okay, from a B to a D. And I'm practicing my shift. That's not a D, that's almost a D sharp. So, oops, that was too high. Okay, I go again. Mm, pretty good. Oh, I'm flat. What I may not do is, and then just kind of bring the finger up because you're really not practicing, you know, hitting the right pitch. You're practicing, in that case, sort of getting to the pitch and then adjusting into the right one. The second rule is no mindless repetitions. You should avoid repeating a shift over and over and over again until you, quote, get it. If you're doing that in your practice, it means usually that you've played it about eight times wrong and a couple of times right. Of course, when you're under pressure on stage, your body will remember those eight wrong versions. Remember that practice makes permanent. If you're missing shifts, you need to dissect the shifting process, work to retrain your ear and your body purposefully and slowly. Okay, let's see if some of these practice blitz exercises can help get you there. Okay, we're going to start by talking about shifting fingers and practicing our shifting fingers. Um, some teachers call these guiding fingers. I've heard them called ghosting fingers, linking fingers. We're all talking about the same thing. We're talking about the finger that is actually moving up on the string while you're shifting. 
Um, we will have to figure out how to determine what your shifting finger is in a passage in a minute. But for now, let me tell you how to practice those shifting fingers. Okay, here's how I want you to practice your shifting fingers. You're going to slur the notes together that you're practicing. You're going to slide up slow enough to hear the slide and really hear the pitch as you're going up, but you're going to go fast enough for it to kind of feel smooth and automatic. Let me show you what I mean. I'll give you a couple of examples. We can take any finger. time my advice to you is to go both up and down not just up because you know you might as well get more bang for your buck by also practicing your downward slides um, when you're doing this you should pay attention to the feel of a position all the positions second not so much but everything above that has a particular feel in terms of where your hand is at the bout fourth fifth you know is kind of snug you can even start by starting in the position that you're going to um, let's say fourth position just kind of feel that D Try to take uh, stock of how everything feels in the hand. And then once you can remember that, then go up and down. So practice your shifting fingers a lot. Uh, make sure that you get more accurates than inaccurates. In fact, I would say try to have mistakes as little as possible. You can slow down your speed of the slide as much as you want to do that. Let's talk about how to determine what your shifting finger is in a passage. Okay, there are several different possibilities for shifting fingers. The easiest and simplest of them is the same finger shift. That's where basically the shift, the note that you're coming from and the note that you're landing on are on the same finger. We're going to take a look at an example. This is a little clip from Sanson Violin Concerto. So for this particular excerpt, your shifting finger is your one, F sharp to A. That's pretty self-explanatory. Let's let, look at another example of a same finger shift. This one is from a passage from Wieniawski Concerto Number no. 2. So in that example, your shifting finger is a 2 you're moving from third position to fifth position. So again, that's exactly what you'll practice. And if you miss, you know, remember Goldilocks rule? That's high. It's okay to miss several times in a row, but do not fudge once you get there and adjust. That really doesn't teach you anything. Okay, let's move on. Okay, the next type of shift is a low finger to a higher finger shift. Really common in the repertoire. I would say it's the most common repertoire in the repertoire that you see. Um, that means that you will be originating from a lower finger, but you'll end up on a higher finger. You're going to, in that case, always be shifting on that lower finger, moving up, and then putting the, the higher finger down. Doesn't matter what combination, two to three, one to four, you're always going to be practicing your shifting finger, which is the finger that you're coming from. The lower finger is your shifting finger. Let's look at an example. This is the beginning of Glazunov Violin Concerto. Okay, so in this example, your shifting finger is your first finger. It's moving A to D, first to fourth position. So that's what you'll practice on a slur. Whoops. And again, you want to kind of feel um, the comfort of the bout, as I like to say. You sort of want to make sure that you know where that is. That's your shifting finger in that example. Okay, what happens when there's a string crossing in the middle of the shift? If you're going from a low to high finger, you're going to shift on the old finger, the finger you're coming from, on the old string then cross strings, then put the new finger down. Let's look at an example of that. This is uh, part of what's commonly known as Vitali Chacon. Okay, so the shift in here is happening C to E flat, which is in the key. 
and then I cross again. So you have to practice both the shifting finger and the C to make sure that that's also in tune. Let's look at the last type of shift. This is a high finger to low finger shift. It works a little bit differently. It actually works in reverse. Let me give you an example. I've played, let's say, a D with my third finger and, I don't know, I'm going up to G. I'm making that up. I'm on a higher finger and I'm going to a lower finger. What I do in that case is, or what you want to do, is you want to switch fingers. I'm going to show that in a close-up shot. I'm on three, I put my one down, I start to slide up, and it bumps the three out of the way. So my shifting finger is actually my one, my new finger, not my old finger. Let's look at this in the context of some repertoire. A little bit of Mozart Concerto number three. So in this example, even though the last note played is a G, I'm actually going to back up to F sharp and shift on 1 to B. So my shifting finger that I need to practice is F sharp to B, first to fourth position. And then I put it back in context. Whoops. And finally, hopefully seamlessly kind of tucking it in between the bows. All right, but what if that kind of shift involves string crossing? Then you're going to move to the new string first before you shift. You're going to place down the new finger, which is your lower finger, and then you're going to shift up. Okay, let's see that in action. I have a three down on the A string. Let's say I want to move up to a 1 on the E string. I'm going to cross, place the finger down, and move up. So my travel path is actually on the 1. It's on the new finger on the new string. Let's look at that in a scenario of some repertoire. Again, Mozart concerto number 3. Okay, so let's, let's look at how we're getting into the second bar of that little clip. I'm moving from third into fourth position. I start on the E string. I play 2-4. Then I'm going to switch. I'm going to put my D down on 1 and move it up. It's actually the shifting finger. So the shift that I need to practice in this case first is this. And then I can put it back in context or do it a little bit quicker. You'll notice I'm trying at least not to vibrate while I'm doing my shifting practice because I want to know the truth about what I'm doing.